Hi, Pete here from Action Camera. We're gonna talk about 10 things that you might wanna think about when you're buying a film camera. Um, when we consider looking for a camera, we have two different kinds of cameras that are produced. One's a mechanical shutter design, so it doesn't require a battery to be utilized in it. You can activate it anytime that you want. But we have electronic shutters in our cameras that require a battery, and so we have to make sure that we have fresh batteries for the camera in order for it to operate. And why is that important when you're selecting a film camera? Um, it's just for convenience. Um, if I have a mechanical camera, I don't necessarily have to have a battery in it for the shutter to release. And so um, as long as I have a battery in there that the meter is working correctly for, then I can go ahead and utilize that. But with an electronic shutter on it, we have to make sure the battery is fresh and working properly to make sure that the camera can operate and be able to release the shutter on the camera itself and activate and advance the film. So when we talk about the metering system in the camera, it's going to give us our exposure. So if we have a mechanical camera that requires a battery, um, it's in order to operate the metering system in the camera so we can get our selection of shutter speed and aperture and then the type of film we're going to actually mechanically adjust that for the type of film that we're utilizing, whether it's a 100 or a 400 ISO film. So with uh, an electronic shutter, we have uh, an operational design where the camera is much more easier to utilize its type of film that you're using because it's automatically setting the ISO by itself. Auto dance and it also in most cases will allow us to autofocus as well. When you're looking for a camera, most cameras can be operated either automatically or manually. So when you look at the camera itself and uh, you want to find the automatic modes that it has or manual modes. Some of the automatic camera designs have program, aperture priority, shutter priority, and manual. So if you're doing manual metering, you want to control everything, then it's going to give you that operational design in an automatic camera. But if you're looking and finding a manual camera, you can either have that in either, some in some cases, automatic or just manual only. And so those allow you to select the shutter speed and the aperture um, independently and creating that exposure. So when we're buying a camera, um, looking for a camera to use, um, if you take a look at the tops of the cameras, they have what's called a hot shoe design on it. Some are dedicated to certain kinds of uh, automatic operations to the camera, which would be the automatic camera, and then some have just a single pin or one extra little pin for more manual operational designs. So you have to look at that if you're considering using flash in your photography. Okay, so when we're talking about manually winding uh, your film on a manual camera, you advance it by, you typically the thumb operation, you advance it one click, and then you can take your picture. But we have automatic cameras that have built-in motor winders or drive designs built into them, so when I press the button, it'll take a picture and automatically advance your, your, your film. So when you're looking for cameras out there or coming into the store and seeing what we have in our used lineup, we have a typical SLR camera, so it's we're talking about cameras that have a mirrored system built into it. So when I take the picture, the mirror lifts up out of the way and the shutter opens. And when you're looking through the lens, you're seeing exactly what the lens is looking at. That's our standard SLR camera. Then we have these rangefinder cameras that you're not looking typically through the lens itself, you're looking through a little eyepiece on the top. So you have a little viewfinder in the back and it allows you to look at where the range of focusing is and sometimes they have little indications that allow you to focus in on something and make it correct. A little bit different design but um, both very easy to use, some are a little more popular than others. So when we're looking at used cameras we want to make sure that we have the ability to keep light from coming in because of the age of the camera. Sometimes they have what's called felt that's designed inside these channels along the edges of the door. And so we have to make sure that they are um, clean or have been refelted so they keep light from coming in. So we want to check that over when we're looking for our cameras used or um, if we have somebody that's maybe a family member has one that you're getting a camera from. The other thing that you might want to consider too is the focusing screen on the SLR cameras which is right up underneath in here. You want to make sure that it's nice and um, not marred um, because that can kind of cause you to kind of look through the camera and looks a little distracting. It doesn't affect your pictures, but it's just something that we have to kind of keep an eye on. Um, plus, there's up underneath the um, mirror up here, um, there's also a pad in there sometimes that's placed in there, and that needs to be replaced as well. Keeps it dampered so it doesn't uh, make a really loud slapping movement happen.
So on the electronic cameras, we have to use the same thing. They have channels that are built into them. A lot of them are just plastic itself, so they kind of seat themselves really easily. But we also have to kind of consider the back plate here. We want to make sure that it doesn't have any big scratches on it or a lot of dust and dirt, that kind of thing, because that's where the film is going to lie. Um, the other thing that we have on these cameras is these little pads right here, this little pad circle that shows us what kind of film we have through the little window. We want to make sure that that's been replaced as well. So those are just things you want to keep an eye on. Is your shutter back here, so you have to be very careful with that. You want to stick your finger in there. That's very, very, very gentle inside there. So you never want to put your finger down in there. And, and then we also have these small little receptors here that are the DX coatings for the type of film that we're using. And so we want to make sure that those are nice and clean as well and very functional. So when we're considering a camera, uh, if we have a mechanical camera, the batteries are util utilized for the metering system to register that light that comes in through the lens itself. So they usually take a small wafer type of battery. But when we consider an automatic camera, we have to consider a little bit more energy because the camera is actually doing more. It's focusing in some cases, autofocusing. It's actually uh, running the drive system of the camera itself. Um, so it requires a little bit more energy um, and it's also running the metering system in the camera so there's more electronics involved with it. So we have to get bigger batteries in order to be able to um, sustain the actions of the camera and make it work correctly for you. Is it true that they don't make some of the batteries for the older film cameras? Some batteries are a little hard to get a hold of. You have to make sure that when you're looking for a camera or coming in and checking with us that batteries that are really still utilized and still being manufactured are available for the camera itself. So in our manual cameras, we have to set the ISO of the film, the type of film that we're using manually. We have a dial on the side that we're gonna put in the type of film, whether it's a 100, 200, 400, 800 film, we have to mechanically kind of dial it into that spot. But the new modern cameras, a little more automatic cameras, have these what's called DX uh, bars on the film itself. So they're little silver bars that are here. And it's in the automatic cameras, we have little sensors that are placed inside that'll show us exactly, they match up to the bars and they automatically set the ISO of the film for you when you insert the film into it. So it's automatically done for you. It's much easier to use. So most people when they're out shooting typically start with a 50 millimeter lens. Um, the 50 millimeter lens is pretty much what your eye sees, the angle of view that you're receiving at. So it's a nice normal lens to start. Typically they're 1.8s or 1.7s, even 1.4s. So you have a nice wide aperture opening, very bright, easy to shoot in all kinds of different lighting conditions. The other one that you might consider is a zoom lens, something that comes in a kit when the cameras were manufactured. Typically something like a 28 to 80, 28 to 70, something like that was produced a lot and that's a nice all around lens. When zoom lenses were being produced, it's kind of a nice one that gives you much a lot of flexibility. So maybe looking for that in a kit would be a really nice way to kind of look for your used equipment. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. See you later. Thanks. <laughs> Bye.